In this video, we're going to look at neurodegenerative diseases, beginning with Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a major cause of dementia. The pathogenesis involves um, amyloid beta peptides and tau proteins. So if we were to cut a section here of the brain and look, um, look at it and look at the difference between a normal brain compared to an Alzheimer's um, brain. So on the left here, we can see a normal brain. These areas that I'm circling correlate with language and memory areas. And if we were to com compare this, the, the brain to a patient who has Alzheimer's, we can see straight away cortical atrophy. As well, we can see loss of these, these areas associated with language and memory. And thus, uh, people who have Alzheimer's disease present with problems with language and memory. So if we were to zoom into um, and look at um, the pathology in more detail of a, uh, of this, of a, a brain of an Alzheimer's patient, we can see that there is um, things within the soma of the neuron. These uh, yellow things I've represented here are actually neurofibrillary tangles, which are made up of the microtubules, the tau proteins. Also, outside of the neuron, we can see um, the accumulation of peptides. These are known as amyloid plaques, which are made from the amyloid beta peptides. So these are essentially the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease, the neurofibrillary tangles and the amyloid plaques. The next neurodegenerative disease uh, that we're going to talk about is um, amyotropic um, lateral sclerosis, also known as motor neuron disease. And this is the disease um, that Stephen Hawking has. Um, and there's a movie about it it's called uh, Theory of Everything. If you haven't watched it, you should. And essentially, motor neuron disease, as the name suggests, affects the neurons that control um, the motor aspects of things, such as movement, um, you know, respiration, cardiac function, everything to do with motor. So if we were to you know, cut a section of the spinal cord here, um, we can see some hallmarks of motor neuron disease. So again, motor neuron disease is a degenerative disease. Um, so it causes muscle weakness because we cannot, you know, we're not using our muscles as effectively due to uh, the problem with the nervous system. Um, and muscle weakness will subsequently lead to disability, and then progressively um, it can it will lead to death. Motor neuron disease causes upper and lower motor neuron signs and symptoms. Motor neuron disease can be sporadic in 90% of cases or familial in 10% of cases. So if we were to compare on the left normal to a patient who has motor neuron disease, we see in um, motor neuron disease, we see ventral root thinning as well as spinal cord atrophy. Now, we see ventral root thinning because actually the motor fibers actually leave through the ventral part of the spinal cord. And thus, because we have, weak, we have problems with the neurons, motor neurons, we see atrophy. We see ventral root thinning. So the neurons, again, coming from the ventral root, we see loss of myelinated neurons. Um, and subsequently, we have muscle weakness. So again, uh, the neurons leaving the ventral part of the spinal cord, these are the motor nerves. We see loss of myelinated neurons. We see loss of these neurons. And thus, subsequently, it will lead to uh, muscle weakness. Um, and progressively, um, it will lead to um, death and dis a disability and death. The next neurodegenerative disease is Frederick's ataxia, which is an autosomal recessive disorder. In this, in this condition, we have loss of uh, loss of function of the FXN gene, which is a mitochondrial gene that normally encodes for ataxin. So because we have loss of this gene, we have a decrease in for ataxin. The clinical manifestation of Frederick's ataxia include neurological dysfunction, cardiomyopathy, as well as diabetes myelitis. So looking at it in a more uh, pathological, um, from a more pathological view, if we cut a cross section of the spinal cord here and compare it compare normal to a one with Frederick's ataxia, we can see straight away we have atrophy of the dorsal root, we have atrophy of the dorsal column, 
and we have atrophy and problems of this some tracts within the spinal cord and this this shows us that we have essentially Frederick's ataxia is a problem with uh, sensory because the dorsal root is responsible for um, the sensory neurons bringing information into our body and the dorsal column is important for bringing these signals up to the brain. The next neurodegenerative disease is Huntington's disease. It is an autosomal, autosomal dominant disease characterized by coriform movements, dystonia, psychiatric problems, as well as dementia. Cutting across section of the brain of Huntington's, we can see differences with a, to a normal brain. So in Huntington's uh, brain, we can see dilation of the ventricles. We can see a decrease in brain size due to loss of striatal neurons, the caudate nucleus and caudate putamen. And as well, we mentioned, we have ventral, um, ventricle dilation. Now, if we focus on a normal brain first, we have genes, um, CAG repeats um, within our cells about 10 to 26 CAG repeats that encode for proteins, the CAG, the Huntington protein. But if we, but in Huntington's, we have a prob, we have actually abnormality of this gene. Instead of having between 10 to 26 CAG repeats, we have 37 to 80 CAG repeats. Um, and the diagnosis for Huntington's is if we have more than 40 CAG repeats. So more than 40 CAG repeats in the gene means that we, that we can be fairly sure of Huntington's disease. Instead of having between 10 to 26 CAG repeats, we have 37 to 80 CAG repeats. And thus, this causes a massive long Huntington protein. And this is essentially known to be the cause of Huntington's disease. So patients who have a family history of Huntington's disease, once they turn 18, they could check their genes to see if they have abnormality in the Huntington genes, more than 40 CAG repeats. And interestingly enough, the signs and symptoms of Huntington's disease come about uh, midway through, through your life, so essentially in your 30s. The next neurodegenerative disorder is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is where we have dopamine, a neurotransmitter called dopamine, depletion in the area of the brain called the substantia nigra. It's characterized by tremors, rigidity, bradykinesia, and postural hypothesis. Um, post postural uh, instability. So these are the cardinal signs of Parkinson's. So if we were to cut a cross section of the brain and compare a normal brain to a patient who has Parkinson's disease, um, we can see that in this area, which is known as a basal ganglia, we have problems. So the basal ganglia is made up of many uh, different components, including the caudate nucleus, caudate putamen, as well as the substantia nigra. So if we were to take, if we were to look at the neurons coming from the substantia nigra in a normal patient uh, compared to a Parkinson's disease patient, we see that we have dopamine being released in, um, from this area. So we have, you know, high to normal amounts of dopamine. Whereas if we were to see a patient with Parkinson's disease, we see lower amounts of dopamine, less dopamine being secreted to the other neuron. And this leads to the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is also associated with a Lewy body formation, um, which, um, can, uh, which, is, which is correlated or associated with uh, dementia. The next condition is spinal muscular atrophy, which is somewhat similar to motor neuron disease. It is an autosomal recessive uh, disease caused by a genetic fault um, in the SMN1 gene. In spinal muscular atrophy, we have degeneration, again, of the ventral horn of the spinal cord, as well as the motor nucleus in the lower uh, brainstem. In this condition, in spinal muscular atrophy, we see symmetrical proximal muscle weakness. So again, if we were to take a cross-section of the spinal cord here and compare a normal uh, spinal cord to the one of a, um, of a spinal muscular atrophy, we see atrophy of the ventral horn, as well as the lower part of the brainstem. The last condition we're going to talk about is um, not a neurodegenerative disease, but it's very similar. It's known as multiple sclerosis, and again, it's not a neurodegenerative disease.
And the reason it's not is because it is a autoimmune disease that affect, that targets um, the myelin that surrounds the neurons within um, the central nervous system. So again, if we were to draw the brain and brain stem uh, and the spinal cord, normally in the central nervous system, we have uh, myelin wrapping around the neurons, which helps it, which helps insulate the neurons, helps in conduction of signals as well as regeneration. If we were to look at a multiple sclerosis neuron, we see damage to the myelin sheath due to a, 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 a deep, due to the immune cells. So we have damage to the myelin sheath, which distorts and interrupts normal signaling. And we have different types of multiple sclerosis. We have relapsing remitting, we have primary progressive, we have secondary uh, relapsing remitting, as well as we have relapsing progressive. 